So now let's solve our problem, our EOQ problem. The first thing we need to do is again to show that uh, or to test its convexity. For the total cost function TC of Q, uh, we know it's this guy. Okay, we can do a first order derivative and a second order derivatives. Uh, if you don't know how to go through this process, you probably need to review your uh, calculus textbook for a while. But at least this is a rational function and this is a linear function. So doing a differentiation for them is, mm, is something we can do. Okay, <coughs> so after the first order derivative and the second order derivative, good. We see that the second order derivative is always positive. Okay, k, d, and the q they must all be positive. Actually, uh, technically we need to be sure that q is not zero. But of course, you are you are not going to order nothing, right? So, this can be uh, the the denominator will never be zero. So this is fine. Huh? It will always be positive. So the TC of Q will be a convex function over the all the feasible Q. Graphically, we can see something like this. For the holding cost, it increases linearly with Q. So when you order more, then your holding cost will become larger. Okay, the, this, this is the order quantity. When you order more, the ordering cost will become larger. But when you order fewer, Okay, when you order fewer, your ordering cost will become larger and nonlinearly. Okay, oh, your ordering cost will become larger when you order fewer. So we are really doing a trade off between ordering cost and the holding cost. We can see that at the beginning, ordering cost is very large, but it also decreases. Uh, faster than how the holding cost increases. So somehow there must be some uh, optimal solution and it's not very surprising that the total cost function is convex. Okay, It's just capturing the trade-off between holding cost and the ordering cost. Okay, so if the function is convex, then let Q star be the quantity satisfying the first order condition. So Q star should satisfy this equation or the da, 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 da. we can see Q star would be something like this. It's the square root of 2 KD over H. Okay? It's a function of K, D, and H. This is what we mentioned as an analytical solution. Okay? Given symbols for parameters, we can express an optimal solution as a function of symbol. That's something we prefer. As this quantity is feasible, it is optimal. Why it is feasible? Of course, it is positive, right? <coughs> as long as it is positive, we can do that. And this is a feasible solution. And then, feasible solution satisfying the first order condition for a convex function, this is optimal. We can also plug in Q star back to the TC function and we can get the resulting annual holding and the ordering cost like this okay and this is just um simple arithmetic so please do that by yourself intuitively when the unit ordering cost or when the unit holding cost becomes larger the total cost will become larger and also if you have more demand to be satisfied your cost will become larger of course, more demand uh, makes you happy, but that's the sales revenue side, okay? In this problem, we don't, we don't talk about sales revenue, so that's not a big deal. When we talk about cost, more demand just requires you to have more cost. Interestingly, all these three things increases your cost in a second-order manner, okay? They are put inside a square root function. So, some observations. The optimal order quantity Q star uh, will be called the EOQ or the economic order quantity. Okay, this is the economic order quantity. Let's do some economic interpretation. We can see that Q star uh, is increasing in the ordering cost K and the annual demand D. 
but it is decreasing in the holding cost H. We certainly want to ask why. When you have a larger ordering cost, you want to prevent paying those ordering costs, right? So you will try to make fewer orders, and that requires you to increase your order quantity in each order. When you have a larger holding cost, you want to minimize or to reduce your holding co uh, your order quantity, right? So it decreases in the holding cost. Finally, when we have more demand, when we have more demand, we are going to increase our order quantity. Uh, this is because when there is a larger demand, if we are still using the original original order quantity then we will have a lot of um, orders, okay? And then it, it's, it's, a, it's beneficial to slightly increase the ordering and uh, the order quantity so that we can save from the too much ordering cost with just a slightly uh, increased holding cost. Okay, so every time when we get an analytical solution, we would like to interpret the solution and uh, for one reason to verify our solution intuitively and another to get some insights from the solution. The solution tells us that when we have a larger ordering cost or larger holding cost or larger annual demand, we are going to do something else. Uh, that's an insight. Let's go back to solve our example. Uh, to remind you, 500 tail lights per year. $5 per order, $0.02 cents per unit per month for holding cost, consumed at a constant rate for our demands, no shortage. Let's ask some questions. What is our EOQ? How many orders are we going to play, uh, place in each year? And what is the order cycle time? Obviously, once we can determine the first one, we can solve the other one. So first, the EOQ, well, we just plug in numbers into the formula while being careful about units. 5 is dollar, 500 is dollar, so 0 0.24 is also dollars. Okay, 2 cents is converted to 0 0.24 dollars. Why? Because we also convert months into years. So, once we make everything consistent, we can numerically calculate this number, this number, and Roughly, in each order, we should order 144 units, okay? Of course, uh, units. Of course, we, if we are ordering um, tail lights, we cannot order um, a fractional number. So in this case, you are going to, for example, round down, okay? Rounding up and rounding down goes, both give you a feasible solution, and uh, intuitively, you may compare 144 and 145 to see which one gives you a smaller uh, total cost. Okay, so that's some adjustments you may want to do. The average number of orders in a year will going to be this one. Okay, in total we need 500 units, and in each order we order Q star units. So roughly in each year we need to place around 3.4 orders. And finally, the order cycle time is the time between two orders. So it will, of course, be 1 over 3.464. 1 is the year. Okay? In each year, there are in total 3.464 orders. So roughly every 0 0.289 years, we need to make an order. Or roughly, that's around 3 and a half months. The number of orders, oh, the number of orders here, and the number, uh, the, the order cycle time here, they are the same, okay? Oh, 3.464 and 3.464. These two numbers are identical. Uh, of course, it may be a coincidence, or always you will see this result. So ask yourself whether this is just a coincidence, or it is always true. Huh. It may be interesting to think about it. For example, plug in some different numbers and uh, see what's going to happen. Okay, try to help yourself about this question. 
Let's do some more cost analysis. We know that the EOQ is around 145 units. Okay, graphically we can see uh, it's somewhere here. Okay, around 145 units. The annual holding cost uh, under the optimal solution is here. Uh, once we order this amount, the holding cost is around $170. The annual ordering cost again no, is somewhere here. Okay, it's again seven around 70.3 units. So the two costs are identical. Okay, on the graph you can see uh, immediately this. This is the lowest point on the global minimum of the total cost. And it also is the intersection of the ordering and the holding costs. Is it a coincidence, or will it always be true? Oh, ask yourself this question. Okay, so uh, that's the end of the discussion about the basic EOQ model. In the next video, we're going to extend the basic model uh, by adding two model frictions. And then we will let you know the EOQ model can actually solve more problems. But uh, the key in this video is that you have a function, is convex, first order condition, you're done, and then some interpretations. That's it. Okay, thank you.